So good evening, everyone. We're continuing our discussion of the Dhammadarastakam, and we're just really beginning with the first verse. Our first uh, discussion involved more the uh, the genesis of the Dhammadarastakam with regard to its having a place within the uh, Gaudiya Vaishnav community. As we heard, it um, appears in the um, in, in one, of the, one of the chapters of Hari Bhakti Vilas that's dedicated uh, to the month of Kartik, uh, Kartik Mahatmya there. Glorification of the Kartik month is uh, the subject of that chapter. And uh, Sanatan Goswami Prabhu has drawn uh, verses from many different uh, texts uh, expressing the virtues of um, uh, the month of Damodar. Svalupamapi hmm. Urukaraka. It is said that uh, it is of the nature uh, that um, by doing a little, one derives a great result, such as the nature of the um, of the month and of the person uh, whom it speaks about, ostensibly Damodar, but um, uh, if we look between the lines, so to speak, then the name Damodar uh, speaks about, uh, Dhamma means really to punish, Hmm. or it means ropes in terms of like tying up, binding. And udara means the belly. So to um, it, the, the name Damodar is about bhakti. Hmm. So it's about the, the ability of bhakti to capture, to punish, to, to control hmm. Krishna. Hmm. And thus the Damodar month is about Radha, who is the full face of bhakti. Mahabhav Swarupani, as we often say, there's a little bhakti in every devotee. She presides over the Ladini Shakti and uh, over this Rup Shakti in general, which is uh, bhakti is constituted of. Bhakti is, con- is a shakti. It's constituted of the essence of Krishna's internal energy, his Swarup Shakti, and it descends of its own will and goes um, she goes wherever she likes. Bhakti Devi is another name for Radha, the presiding deity of Bhakti. So, by the name, it would appear that the month is about Krishna in one sense, but if we look carefully at Krishna, close enough we see there's someone standing next to him. Hmm. And if we keep looking, we see there's the two of them become one in a third person as Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and as such, we know about all these things, and it was he, as we heard, who commissioned uh, Sri Sanatan Prabhu to, among other things, write a book about the Vaishnava decorum the, um, and the procedures for the uh, community of Vaishnavas that will come under your auspices um, um, in pursuit as you are of my ecstasy and what I'm about. Uh, this is the forming of the Gaudiya Vaishnava Society, or the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. Siddhat Sanatana Goswami is, uh, is really the architect of the society. He's giving, in this sense, some structure to it. <clears throat> the book Hari Bhakti Vilas, of course, is a lengthy um, text, and um, it... Um, has been applied over the ages under the direction of different acharyas um, differently at different times and different circumstances. And I think we, we talked about that. But it's an important text as much as the, the character and, and the procedures and whatnot. The, the smriti of the, the Vaishnavas, um, Bodhi Vaishnavas, um, are concerned. This is This is what the book is about. We don't have to follow the Manusmriti or such books that uh, preside over the Dharma Marg 
This is the ka- the karma marg. Uh, another way of saying it. This is the bhakti marg. Hmm? We have our own um, guidelines, and this is the Chaitanya bhakti marg. So important work of uh, Sanatan Goswami, and as I say, as we've heard, one of the chapters is all about the Kartik Vrati. You may note also. Uh, that in Bhaktarasamrita Sindhu, the tome uh, on bhakti of Sri Rupa Goswami Prabhupada, probably, I mean, undoubtedly, the most comprehensive uh, dissertation on the nature of bhakti. The only thing that uh, has some uh, resemblance to it is the earlier work of Narada, Narada Bhakti Sutras. And of course, it pales in comparison in terms of its its depth and richness and and so forth. And that's not the fault, Nard. Indeed, the very definition of bhakti, um, given by Rupa Goswami, that is that his whole book Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu evolves out of into various chapters. That verse Anya Bilashita Sunyam Gyan Karmadi Anavritam Anukulena Krishna Anushilanam Bhakti Ruttama. He has, in putting that verse together, referred to one of Narada's verses. Hmm? That verse is, what is that verse? Rishikena Rishikesha Sevanam Bhakti Ruchare. What is, how does it begin? Sarvopadi. Vinir muktam tatparat vinir malam vishikena rishikesha sevanam bhakti ruchate. So from there, from the tantric side um, um, of the sacred texts, um, also from the Gopal Tapani, from the Shruti, and uh, the, the, the particular Shruti text or Upanishad that is um, Gopal Tapani. I mean, tapa means light. It means knowledge. Knowledge is often graphically depicted as light. A light bulb goes off in the head, uh, and so on. Um, top also means austerity. It means, in a sense, restraining the senses. And if, our st- if we restrain our senses from going outward in relation to the sense objects, then we, we end up going inward and becoming introspective. Even if our senses are forced to be restrained from sense objects, for example, if we were imprisoned or something like that, um, we would we would we would to live in such a situation. One has to go within hmm, and find deeper meaning and purpose that lies beyond external and physical circumstances. Hmm. Value in life, really, and a meaningful life does not depend on external circumstances. Hmm? Still, we should try to find favorable circumstances for bhakti. <laughs> that's true. We're told to tolerate, that's true, but we're also told to find favorable circumstances for bhakti. And within the context of that, whatever we have to tolerate, we will. Some of my god brothers have told me at times that you know, if you could have stayed in a particular group under a particular administration, you could have developed tolerance. I said, uh, I, uh, we've got plenty of opportunity to do that. I don't, I don't need to. <laughs> um, we need a favorable environment. This is equally emphasized. And within the context of that, there will be things to tolerate. But anyway, tapa, hmm? um, as it means, it means austerity, it, it, it means knowledge. So restraining the senses from sense objects causes us to go within and be introspective and and uh, and so on and so forth and get light hmm? and gopal tapani that introspection that swaha that sheds light on gopal hmm? there the mantra this the central mantra of Gaudi Vaishnavism is found hmm? govindaya krishnaya govindaya gopijana balavaya Swaha, and that swaha is the very principle of sacrifice embodied in the person of Radha, the sacrificing deity. <coughs> a fellow once, uh, not long, a couple of years back, uh, challenged one of my students that 
he said, in our religion we have the real God, because in our religion our God is sacrificing, a sacrificer, a giver, and your God is a taker, a playboy, an enjoyer. So when I was told that, I replied uh, to my student, I said, you should have told him that in order for there to be a sacrificer, there needs to be an enjoyer on the other end. Hmm? In order to give everything, there has to be someone who can take everything. That's why Krishna's two Bhagavan Swayam is important, because it, 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 it gives us one of the two things we need to engage in unconditional love or giving. We need a center that can take unlimitedly. We have to find that. Hmm? That is the meaning of Krishna's two Bhagavan Swami, or Kila Rasamrita Murti, same idea. He can take unlimitedly. So if we give there, and then the second part is if we give without expectation of return, then we have the, the uh, formula for unconditional uh, giving. Hmm? So, so Krishna, we have on the other end the enjoying end, right? Hmm? And it just so happens that the enjoying center to which all sacrifice is to be offered is such that by accepting the offering, it reconstitutes it and distributes it everywhere, like the stomach reconstitutes food that's uh, taken in a, by all the parts of the body. We walk to get it, we use our hands to prepare it, we use our t- mouth and teeth and tongue to, to taste and chew it and then swallow it and and then the stomach reconstitutes it and sends the energy to all the parts of the body. Hmm? So properly understood, the taker is also uh, a giver. Hmm? But besides that, and I didn't make the point at the time, but it comes to my mind now, and so I'm telling the story, excuse me, that in our religion we have the supreme taker, but we have an example of giving that exceeds yours, as well, and then you should study the person of Radha and what is her 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 nature and so forth and so on um, and of course, the Leelas between Radha and Krishna have great power to to touch the human um, emotional makeup and allow us to bond with the absolute in a way that um, another form that may touch your guilt uh, doesn't do as comprehensively. In other words, if some is sacrificing on the cross, and we might feel emotionally a bonding with the Godhead through guilt. That was kind of the conclusion, I think, of the reviewers of Mel Gibson's movie about the crucifixion some years ago. Hmm. But in Krishna Leela, in the interactions between Radha and Krishna, we, we find a whole range of human emotions are played out. And when we hear them, hmm, then we, we bond with those moments when the Godhead is most human-like. We can identify with it. We, he's like us, something like that. So these are very powerful uh, narratives given to us by the Goswamis, by the Bhagavatam, and so forth. Because we are emotional beings, and this is a very natural way to bond with the deity. Hmm? Through our own emotional experience of life, hmm? and the Godhead having similar experiences in relation to his devotees. Hmm? So, you know, Rupa Goswami is drawn from Gopaltapani, from Narada, uh, writings, also from Bhagavatam, third canon, and, the, and the, the, the definition of devotion given by Kapila Dev to Devahuti to come up with his own verse describing bhakti. So in his tome, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the nectar of the ocean of Bhakti Rasa, with regard to Kartik, um, he, he, he lists it its observance, observance of Kartik, as one of the angas of bhakti. He doesn't list the other three months of the Chaturmasa. You can follow that if you like, but but they're all complete, if you will, and more. 
by observance of the of this month, which is done in various ways, as described in Hari Bhakti Vilas. Um, but in principle, uh, some 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 little sacrificing <laughs> extra, and it brings a very big result. Like I said the other the night, water is not a big thing, but if you're in the desert, it's huge. So this is a month where a little service brings a big amount of reciprocation. Reciprocation will come from the absolute relative to the necessity. So that's why um, Bhaktivinoda once commented on the necessity of 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 Radha, the object of his worship, at the time of their meeting with Krishna at Kurukshetra. They had come so close, but they were still so far away. They could not, because the setting was not there, Vrindavan, they could not unite in Parakya. So in Radha's necessity was very great at that time. Pujapat Sridhar compared it to the team, football team, getting to the one-yard line and not making the touchdown. Hmm. So when her necessity was very great, Bhakti no Thakur said, let me reside there and render service to her in that condition. That will be good for me because the nature of the necessity, the measure of the necessity, will determine the measure of the remuneration. Hmm. So uh, he's just making a point there. He didn't really want to just live in Kurukshetra, but... Yeah point of as I as I've made so in in the uh, Hari Bhakti Vilas in this chapter um, among other things we have the Dhammadarastakam it's uh, perhaps uh, f- found originally in the Padma Purana it's written by Satyabhata Muni and um, it comes to us in Gaudiya Vaishnavism uh, through uh, this way through Hari Bhakti Vilas and the the order of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is not in Goswami, so it's not in Goswami Prabhupada ki jai. And, uh, and the Goswami has written a commentary also on the Dhammadarastakam, a brief commentary, Dig Darshini, which means like, it means like direction, Darshini, to get the direction, to get the right orientation, something like that, how to, how to understand it properly. You may proceed to take advantage of all that it, it offers. Um, the um, and that that uh, Bhakti uh, Pragyan Keshav Maharaj, one of Prabhupada's godbrothers, he uh, uh, who, uh, rendered it into Hindi, and uh, their sect Gurivedanta Samiti many years ago rendered it into English as well. So it's been around. Um, this is the sannyas guru of Prabhupada, Bhakti Pragan Keshav Maharaj. So it's bona fide. <laughs> so um, we will speak a little from the uh, the about the, the different prayers here, and uh, we'll refer to the Goswami's commentary as well. So um, here in the first verse, Namam Ishwaram Satchiranandarupam Lasat Kundalam Gokule Brajamanam Yashoda bhiyolu kalad dhavamanam paramishtam atyan tato drutya gopya. Sanatan Goswami has uh, divided his uh, this verse into uh, um, uh, understood it as an explanation of the tattva of Krishna, the beauty of Krishna, the parikar or associates of Krishna, and the lila of Krishna. So, we'll go through those uh, tattvas, if you will, the vishesh uh, of them, the specifics of them, and beginning with the tattva, namam ishwaram, sachiranandarupam. So, along with it, uh, speaking about the tattva, about the deity, uh, in this first line of the verse, uh, the uh, author, the Muni, um, as is a- appropriate in prayer, offers his respect to the deity, Namam Ishwaram. In a broad uh, sense, uh, he invokes the, the, the word Ishwar. It means 
God, the controller. Namam Ishwaram. Nama means not me. It's a very nice idea, uh, kind of a uh, uh, a greeting even within uh, Hinduism. Namaskar, hmm? Namaste. Hmm? Um, it's not it's not about me. It's about you. Something like that. Hmm? And uh, about the the deity within you. And I offer my respect to you who are carrying the Lord in the heart. And uh, this kind of respect for others is an important um, aspect, actually, of, of bhakti. It's often lost, unfortunately, on some devotees, and that's pointed out in the Bhagavatam itself by Kapila Muni to his mother, Devahuti, when he says that those offerings to me of ghee and so forth that are um, made by persons who at the same time do not have respect for other living beings I consider those offerings to be like what like ghee poured into ashes. So that's a big waste of ghee to pour it onto ashes, but it's all it's wasted. Hmm? Which is an interesting point because all of, you know to offer ghee to the Lord is a nice thing. So the ingredients are nice, looks good, and so forth, but the offering is hollow. Hmm? Um, it's a point. An interesting point that comes up in relation to Rupa Goswami's definition of bhakti also, because he says bhakti should be anukul, favorable. And by contrast, the example is given by the commentaries of Mother Yashoda, who's part of the central to the Dhammadarastakam here, um, who uh, is not offering beautiful things to Krishna, but rather chasing him with a stick and tying him up. Mother ties child, you know, up in backyard, it's it's bad. <laughs> Should be on CNN. <clears throat> Ties infant up, and trees fall, you know, near <laughs> uh, and so forth. But what was her attitude? We have to. We'll come to that, of course. And then, what is the attitude of the of the man offering the? You know, he comes in, offers the rupee in the box, and makes a light with the ghee and. But he wants something from him. Give me this, give me that. And he disregards the discourse that's going on in the temple because he has no regard for the Vaishnav. So, so not good. So, um, <clears throat> so, um, yeah, he sees the deity, doesn't regard the Vaishnav, and as Kapila saying, if he doesn't have regard for other ordinary people as well, then I'm, I I don't get anything out of his offering. Hmm? The interesting thing about offering, of course, is that there are formalities for that, and that's important to help us. Sometimes people say, "Well, what does God need to eat?" You know, what are you? God doesn't need to eat anything. God doesn't need any money. God doesn't need a temple. So why are you spending your time like this? They got this. You might have heard this at times, and those of you out there selling the books and so forth and asking for money. Uh, um, in Bhagavad Gita Thakur's mission, they built a marble temple in uh, Beng- in uh, Calcutta. That time, pre- previous to that time, the Vaishnavas, the Gaudi Vaishnavas were all living in the Dhams, in Navadweep, in Puri, in Vrindavan. They wouldn't go to Calcutta. That was Maya, the land of Maya. Hmm. So it was very bold on the part of Bhagavad Gita Thakur to go to Calcutta and to erect the famous marble temple. You know, it just didn't, such a thing didn't exist at the time. There were the old, old temples constructed by the Rajas under the inspiration of Rup Sanatan and Vrindavan, for example, Radha Govinda Mandir and Radha Damodar and so on and so forth, um, done by the kings, but they were in the Doms. So to go to Calcutta and establish a temple, the Gaudi of Aishnav people, the community thought, this, this guy's crazy here for going there. And then they, the sannyasis would be sent out, the brahmacharis, to raise money from the pious people for the temple. Hmm? And they would get this kind of reaction, like, you know, well, money could be spent on feeding people, and you're just uh, giving it to the, for the, you know, marble temple. God doesn't need a marble temple. Uh, there was a famous verse that uh, was part of a... a, a, a a song or an ostacum composed by Bhakti Siddhartha Thakur in Bengal, 
in Bengali that was sung when they took the deity from the rented house into the finely constructed Bagbazar marble temple. And the centerpiece of that uh, verse it really encapsulates what uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Sarsri Thakur's uh, preaching was all about. It goes something like this Pujala Raga Patagoda Vabange Matala Harijan Kirtan Narange. Hmm. That um, our position is that, that we will, we are not interested in reverential worship like in Vaikuntha. We're interested in the Ragmarg, but we're interested in worshiping with reverence the Ragmarg, holding it above our head and who are Rup, Sanatan, Gopis and Gopikas and Gopas and Gopikas and so forth. And what is that life of Vrindavan? And we will do Harikirtan preach about that, what it is, and much of our preaching, 80% of it will be what it is not, what it is not, to distinguish it from what people might might misconstrue about it. Hmm? Um, and in this way, by Hari Kirtan, hmm, um, Gaurava Bhange, the, rev- the Gaurava, this, this means reverence, will be, will be overridden. Hmm? As we preach about that, and show regard for it rather than imitating it and thinking ourselves qualified to go there with our shoes on and so forth, then by speaking about it appropriately, then it will, our regard for it will be broken by its own uh, uh, kind of dispensation. It will be attracted to that. Hmm? This is how Mahaprabhu's movement began in one sense. He was doing kirtan in Sri Vasangam and nobody could get in except his associates. Some people insisted they should be allowed in for this reason or that and they were rejected. But some people felt they would like to get in but they weren't qualified. They sat on the bank of the Ganges and and pined for that. And for them he came out. Hmm? So bhakti is something like this. In a sense we kind of need to position ourselves in such a way as to attract the sympathy of Krishna and his, his associates. Hmm? Imitation of a good thing to a point can be, be a good thing. When, um, when we were kids, when I was a kid, you went to the bus stop to go to school, and if a girl liked you, she'd somehow find out through the grapevine what your favorite colors were and show up wearing a red dress or whatever, or just happy to have a piece of apple pie or something like that. So, uh, <laughs> they found out what you liked and then, you know, acted accordingly, something like that. So, sadhana, something like that. We see great devotees, they dress, they conduct themselves like that, so we dress up like that and, and, and uh, it becomes a, uh, the possibility of, of attracting Krishna's attention, attracting their sympathy. I mean, I saw Prabhupada, I mean, I, obviously we dressed like Prabhupada and we talked like him, broken broken English too you're so, you're so ridiculous but uh, but uh, and he Prabhupada gave me sannyas I was 25 years old and um, I see him several times chuckle just chuckle at, just look at me and chuckle <laughs> you know but it was very very generous and uh, and uh, warm and uh, accepting hmm? Accepting imitation of a good thing, like you know, a child tries to wear the father's shoes. You know, everybody goes, "Isn't that cute?" You know, of course, after a while, he's got to wear them. <laughs> Otherwise, it's not cute. <laughs> By the time you're, you know, many years involved and so forth, and so. But in the beginning, so bhakti is very generous. So to to draw the the, the sympathy of the, uh, it is said that humility is. Uh, as we grow, as humility grows, Sanatana Goswami in his Pirt Bhagavatamrita has said, there is a point where humility becomes synonymous with bhakti. And humility fosters bhakti and bhakti fosters humility. And they play off of one another like this. So the humility is very important, of course. And it's it's something like a bucket that doesn't have holes in it. So you think, there I'll pour the water there. It will stick there. It will hold there. Hmm? So it's a good uh, good receptacle. Hmm. Mount Mahabharata was mandated as part of the decorum of his devotees to be humble like a blade of grass and so on and so forth. Hmm. Of course, that has to be properly understood. It's not a 
a recipe for psychological dysfunction and so forth in the name of humility. Humility before the truth, and you have to know what the truth is, and sometimes you have to say, no, I'm not doing that because this is the truth here, and so forth. So, at any rate, <clears throat> um, <laughs> uh, bhakti is such that that it includes, as we're saying, respect for all people. Bhakti Vinodhaka put it like this, Jibe doi krishna nam sarva dharma sar. The essence of dharma is, is nam kirtan and kindness to all living beings. What to speak of other devotees, to respect for all living beings. Hmm? So Hindus kind of have this built in here with this kind of greeting opposed to the handshake, it's hands folded and namaste, namaskar, so not me, it's not about me, it's about you, something like that. Once I was told by Pujapad Sridhar Maharaj, if you want to understand Vrindavan, go to the Howrah train station in Calcutta, which is a madhouse, especially when the train pulls up and everybody just tries to get in the little doors and Pushing, 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 everybody. Hordes and hordes of people. So how am I supposed to understand Vrindavan by going to the Haura train station? He said, you have to go there and look at it and watch it and then think of it, what it would be like in reverse. The train pulls up and everybody goes, you first, no, you first, no, you first, no, you first. Mm -hmm. So this is Vrindavan, something like this. Hmm? Hmm? Everyone thinking of the welfare of others and capable of being um, well wishers of others because of having Krishna in the center of their lives. So here the Muni, at any rate, he invokes the term Namaste, Namam Ishwaram. And Ishwaram, as I said, is a general term. It means controller, it means God. Um, and uh, uh, Sanatana Prabhu has given three ideas here. The Muni is asking by invoking the term Ishwaram, uh, he is thinking that uh, his deity here, whom he's offering respects to, is Sarva Shakti Man, or the possessor of all Shakti. This is what makes him the Ishwar. He has all power. Mm -hmm. And he is asking for the power from the Sarva Shakti Man to be able to glorify him accurately and adequately. The second part is impossible, but at least accurately, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of rasa, in terms of tattva. Mm -hmm. uh, he's imploring him for that, that kind of power. Um, we uh, find uh, Prabhupada making a prayer also, a famous prayer, very important prayer, very central to his whole ideal and the way in which he pursued it, the prayer he wrote on the Jaladutta, where he negotiates with Krishna and asks for the power to do the bidding of, uh, as he understood it, bidding of Radharani coming through the person of Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur, who was himself absorbed in Radhadasyam and had asked our Prabhupada to go to the West and preach. So he negotiated with Krishna, my dear Krishna, my dear friend Krishna, um, it's known uh, as a fact, and it's fixed forever in all time, like the pole star Druva, the, which uh, other planets are thought to orbit around. If you please Radharani, your life will be successful. This is how Prabhupada approached him. Very insightful. That will certainly get Krishna's intention, attention. You know that about me. And so my guru, who is representing Radharani, has asked me to do something. Hmm? And I think it would be good for you if you give me the power to do that. <laughs> then your life will be successful. Hmm? This is how he negotiated in his prayer. This wasn't a prayer for public consumption. This is his own private moments on the on the board the boat and so forth. Of course, it's become available. Pujapat Sridhamarsh gave a very deep, explanation of it, part of which we're touching on here. But the whole of Gaudiya Vaishnavism is right there in, the, in that negotiation. This is, he's addressing Krishna as his friend, my dear friend. Mm -hmm. Here's how I think. This is a moral instruction 
uh, offered to Krishna on the part of Prabhu, which is typical of Krishna's romantically involved friends, friends who are involved in his romantic life, like Subal, the leader of them. To uh, Subal in particular is very expert at offering moral advice to Krishna and giving him counsel with regard to getting Radha's favor and so forth, which is his Krishna's preoccupation. So we find Prabhupada expressing his mood, of course, later in the prayer. From that he then goes, half of the prayer is about Sharanagati, about uh, how to deserve, as Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Thakur used to say, first deserve, then desire. So let's say, for example, as it means, let's say you want to go to India. So you come to me and say, Swami, I want to go to India. Can you tell me all about it? And I say, well, have you got a... Uh, you got, did you get, have you got your ticket? No. Have you got a passport? A visa? No. Have you got a passport? No. Have you got any money? No. Have you got a job? No. Okay, you want to talk about going to India? Here's what I suggest. Get a, peop- get a newspaper out or go on the internet on Craigslist and look for a job. I want to talk about India. Get a job. So I'm, I'm talking about India. You want to go to India? You want to talk about it? I'm talking to you about it. Get a job. That doesn't make sense. Or somebody says, Swami, I want a mango. Very good. I can give you one. Hmm? I heard they're very juicy and delicious. Yes, they are. I'll give you one. I have one right here. And he, Swami pulls out a dried mango seed. He hmm? says, here's one. Here's what you do with it now. Dig a hole and put it in the ground. What? Uh, they're supposed to be juicy and hanging from trees that are up high. You're telling me to bury it in the ground. Yes, but if you have faith, then you put it in the ground, you water it. Or in the other analogy, you get a job, you get money, come back, what now? Okay, now go get a passport. Okay, now go get a visa. Hmm? Now get a ticket, now get the travel log and let's talk about it. Hmm? What it will be like. Now it's Now it's time to really get into the details and where you should go and so on and so forth. Hmm? Because you've you, 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 you now you're at a point where it's it's you've 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 done the work, hmm? so to speak, you've deserved, you've surrendered in the you know, example of bhakti. Hmm? You've done the the the, the submission hmm? and so the stage the dramatic stage of Sharanagati is in place, and so the drama of the Leela will be appearing there soon, no doubt. So now it's time to really talk significantly about about, about the Leela and what your role might be there in the drama. Hmm? But not on, on day one, something like that. Hmm? So we find in Prabhupada's prayer, the first half of the prayer after the refrain, which I've just explained, he very beautifully uh, petitions uh, in, in a mood of a sharanagata, a surrendered soul, and so forth. And then, having done that, in the second part of the prayer, he expresses longing, lalasa, longing. Hmm? Um, and then, of course, the famous line, what does he say? Um, Kottavani chutta chutti vani kai ludaputi se din kovehovemor. It's very beautiful. Hmm? Uh, uh, hmm. Hmm. Um, that he says, oh, my dear friend, when he longing, when will I throughout the day run and frolic and somersault on the ground in playful sports through the various pastures and forests of Vrindavan with you in playful, sportive mood? Hmm expressing his ideal of of uh, uh, Sakya Rasa. So, uh, he prayed for the power to do the work by which he would have that kind of samadhi. <laughs> he was, he, when, by the time he's praying for this, that, that ideal, um, he, he put the two together. What did he do? He, how he came here selflessly, emptied himself out, and so forth. Krishna filled him up with the power. So here the Muni is praying for the power, Shakti, to just to, to be able to glorify him. What the implication is? What? How can he? What can I do? What can I say 
about him. He is such the Ishwar as is. I conceive him Sachirananda Rupam, and we'll hear who his deity is. What can I say about him? How can I possibly adequately um, glorify him? So I need spiritual power, of his own power, to say something about him. Hmm? This is the idea. And secondly, Sanatan Prabhu says the word Ishwaram here also in, is invoked uh, for the purpose of saying on the part of the Muni that you are the Ishwaram, and that means here, secondly, Jagat Eknath, the one Lord of the world, the one Lord of the world. Because the word Ishwar may be used in different ways, and what's central to Bhakti is the idea that what? Ma me kam sharanam raja. Sarva dharman purityacha. It means give up all other gods and goddesses, all of whom are invoked, prayed for within Varnashram. The Varnashram is a, is a polytheistic um, perspective. Hmm? And uh, it has its beauty in that it's petitioning all the gods and goddesses that represent different powerful manifestations of nature, that I might show gratitude in my pursuit of sense indulgence and factor into that taking from the environment some sensibilities about uh, 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 about the Godhead and uh, my dependence and so forth. And again, the real gift within the Varnashram system is not what you get from the sacrifice, but the fact that you develop a tendency to sacrifice. Hmm? Then you then you grow, hmm? and as that grows, then within the context of inquiring about Dharma, then you can inquire about about Brahman, about the inner world, and so forth, and about Rasa, Brahma Jignasu, Rasa Jignasu. So he makes a nice point here by saying, Ishwaram. He by using the term, he's referring to the one God, hmm? Krishna, hmm? Vishnu, but. Um, not to the many many gods in Varnashram, so it's a it's a prayer of Shuddha Bhakti. Hmm. Um, the again, this is how the Gita concludes. You should have faith in this and and and, and Shraddha that Krishna is expressing to Arjun is the his eligibility to tread the path, have faith in this, not in any god or goddess and any other method, but just me alone, that faith alone, and then I will take care of you, I will protect you. So this is speaking about really entry level to bhakti. This, the shraddha corresponds externally with the sharanagati. Sharanagati is the outer symptoms of the inner faith. So you can measure our faith, by the extent to which we are involved in Sharanagati, which is sixfold, and to embrace it is, is an important anga of of bhakti. <clears throat> Ananya bhakti, this kind of bhakti, different kinds of bhakti, we are exclusive bhakti, shuddha bhakti, uttam bhakti, ananya, eight kanta, different terms, but they all mean the same thing. So the point here is that, that, that the Muni is speaking about, this, this is what this is about. Uh, uh, it's interesting because inside of the the chapter, there are various things, statements drawn from different Puranas by Sanatana Goswami glorifying the month of Kartik in terms, in other terms. In other words, if you follow the Kartik, you'll get this or you'll get that. If you don't, this will happen to you or that will happen to you. But the central piece in one sense of the chapter is the Dhamandarastikam, which is about Uttam Bhakti. And thirdly, the term Ishwar here also refers to the Pranishwar. Hmm? So this then becomes takes a, a, a turn in the, in the charming direction. We find this uh, two uses of the word Ishwar in Mahaprabhu Shikshastakam also. In the fourth verse, he says, "Nadanam, Najanam, Nasundarim, Kabitam, Ba, Jagad Isha, Kamaye." He says, "I don't want money." Uh, I don't need a an, 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 an material relationship. Um, uh, I don't need uh, the uh, uh, following of others, praise of others. Nadanam, nadanam, nasundarim, kabitam. Neither, neither, if I have any use for the for the high society, 
Kobe, the, the, the arts, the opera, <laughs> the arts, the sophisticated culture, that it somewhat displaces you from your material orientation, like in the arts, and you go and you're displaced from your seat and projected emotionally into the drama to some extent, but it's all secular. If it's the bhakti drama, that's another thing. But hmm, so it's, it's, I, I don't have any need for this. Nadanam najanam na sundurim kabitam ba jagat isha kamore. Or the jagat isha, the Lord of the world, jagat isha. Jagat means the world isha, who presides over all these things. He's presiding over all these desires. Hmm, right? He provides the world. He gives the sanction to the demigods that they can provide when people approach them, and so on and so forth. Mahaprabhu says, I have no need for this Ishwar, the Eknath Ishwar, the second interpretation of Ishwar here in the, in the, in the, in the Astakam. Hmm? And then he says what? Na danam na janam na sundarim kavitam ba jagadish kame mama janmani janman Ishware baba tad bhakti arahoy takitoy. He used the word Ishwar a second time. The second time he's saying, I don't need the Jagadishwar and all that he presides over, all the desires in material life, hmm? even up to liberation, he says, Mama Janmani, Janmani Shwade, Bhabhatat Bhaktir. But I have interest in the Isha, Ishwar of my Bhakti. Hmm? Hmm. I have only inter- I want to do only Bhakti. Hmm. I don't care about acquiring things, neither about getting away from the things. Hmm? And I just want to do bhakti to my, the pranish, or the lord of my, my heart. So this is where the paramatma is displaced, so to speak, from the heart, and Krishna is taking his, his seat there. This is as the stage, theatrical stage, dramatic stage of Sharanagati in Ruchi Bhakti is established. And the next verse, of course, is about asakti, and the deity comes on the stage, and and Mahaprabhu expresses desire to live in the house of Nanda Maharaj as a maid servant there, and so on. So here we find a similar idea; it's very beautiful. Uh, he moves from petitioning the Ishwar, who has all power, to give me the power to say something about you, and by the way. Which Ishwar am I speaking about? The Eknath Ishwar, the one exclusive devotion to him I'm interested in, one God, who ultimately is takes the form of my Pran Ishwar, takes a particular, as we said the other night, shows particular qualities, a particular form, has particular leelas that are attractive to my heart, hmm, that have arisen in my heart as a result of my association and subsequently taking advantage of that association. So, namam ishwaram satchiranand rupam. Hmm? And then he says something about him. He sat, he's chit, he's ananda. He is the very rupa, the very form of eternity, knowledge and bliss. This is a very abstract idea. Hmm? But the idea is something like this. What are material forms? That's a good question. What is matter is a good question, but and what matters also. But material forms, in one sense, they are derived from consciousness projecting itself onto matter. Hmm? Right. So we have the basic ingredients of this house that are you know everywhere: hmm? earth, water, fire. However, we want to talk about them, hmm? but. They become a house because of consciousness, right? A conscious being construes them as such and gives gives shape, in a sense, to the material forms. Hmm? So if consciousness projected on matter results in its taking shape, various shapes, hmm? that's the whole idea of, you know, God glanced and the subtle matter reflected the consciousness and physical matter evolved out of that, and so, con- otherwise, consciousness matter is in a in is in, a, in the pradhan in the stage of uh, equilibrium, hmm? has no shape, but by the glancing it takes shape and it, 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 and and enfolds enfolds 
expand, whatever, hmm? and so on. So then the idea is, what if consciousness is to be reposed on itself? Hmm? Right? Hmm? Then this is the idea of spiritual form, reflecting on itself. Hmm? Hmm? This is the beauty of Chaitanya Charitamrita that it doesn't it picks up where the where the idea of the that consciousness is different from matter and that you are consciousness having left people breathless like the yogis and the minds of the jnanis stopped at the thought hmm? it 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 picks up and 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 then chaitanya charit amrita chaitanya means consciousness the, the mortal nectar of the possibilities that lie in the realm of consciousness it's such a mouthful i've given an example before that to be in the karmic implicated in the karmic life is like being in negative numbers if from there you come to zero zero has a positive connotation in relation to negative numbers that's a big ah oh, i'm out of the negative numbers oh, i've arrived at peace zero comfortable. Hmm? But Mahaprabhu was so bold to say, wait a minute, are there any positive numbers? Huh. We're like all just resting here. We just arrived, right? We just got out of the negative numbers. Where it's peace, shanti, shanti, shanti. And you want us to move again? Hmm? And with such a bold question, who can even ask such a thing? Positive numbers. Hmm? And Mahaprabhu says, yes, up to 108 number. What? Hmm. Movement and transcendence, variegatedness and transcendence. We just got away from movement and variegatedness. It was a problem. You felt like this, I felt like that. There were differences. We were at odds. We were fighting. We just got peace and rest. And you want us to move again now? Hmm. Yes, in relation to a significant consciousness other. Hmm. Who has the who is the very form of eternity, knowledge, and bliss that you are just an an anu of? Hmm? We are just an atomic particle of being. Being means sat. This is what's emphasized in the Gita. This aspect of ourselves that we are real. We are endure, not like material things that come and go here today and gone tomorrow. When Krishna is giving his explanation of why Arjun should fight. He says, don't worry about the killing. You know, you're eternal, everybody's eternal, and so on, and so many so many things, he, he points he makes, he's all that is talking about the sat of the jiva. You exist, you exist, you exist. You don't, sat means you don't undergo the transformations that material things undergo that cause them to be here today and gone tomorrow. You're sat, you're sat. Hmm? And then he concludes his discussion by saying, what can I say? Some people say the self is amazing. Some people experience it as amazing. Some people hear about it, it's amazing. It's amazing. What can be said about consciousness? It's not a thing. So how can we define it when all things are defined by comparing them to other things? It's not like anything. What can we say about it? Words stop here. Hmm? Thought stops because it is beyond thought and beyond things beyond the thoughts about things. Hmm? So, what can be said? Of course, the sutras, as understood by Baladev, say, Naikshite Shabdat. Hmm? He, is, he, he sees it as a dull negative. Hmm? It's not that somebody can say nothing about it. Not that no one can say nothing or something like about it, but no one can say everything about it. Hmm? There's much to be said about consciousness in its full sense, as Bhagwan. Hmm? There's much to be said, but words can't do justice to it. That's true. Words go there and return, and so we need more words. There's not enough. Shankar says, cannot be spoken about. And we say, Cannot enough not not enough can be said about hmm? 
It's a very different idea, right? Not enough can be said about. So with the variety, the, 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 the displays of the Swarup Shakti, ongoing, finding, anticipating the desire of Bhagawan and manifesting in Leela, whatever is required for fulfilling his desire at every moment. It's a very interesting idea from war of material existence to peace and from peace to peace and love also, which is again movement and requires variety and so forth and has charm and beauty and much power to... It validates the human sensibilities that there is a love. It's worth pursuing. We are justified in not pursuing spiritual life if the only explanation of it is, is gyan, give up loving. I would rather have loved imperfectly even for a moment than to give it up altogether. We're justified in, 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 in refusing the, the call of the Upanishads as understood by the jnanis. But bhakti confirms the love that you pursue. It's what life is about. Hmm. It can be had. Hmm. Just you have to center it on on the perfect object of love. Hmm? So it's very it's very I say it's a very um, it's a kind of a spiritual uh, humanism. It validates the human experience, and we, of course, are just an atomic particle of sat, and we are chit in the sense that we are cognizant and unlike matter, which is achit. It's not that we have all knowledge in us, but we have the capacity for knowing, hmm? cognizing, and so forth. And same with loving. We have the capacity to love. Hmm? Hmm. So in order for that to be, especially the loving component, to be fully experienced, we have to have a significant other. Hmm? Atma, Atmananda is nothing in compared to bhakti ananda. That's the central lesson of the Bhagavatam, as taught by Sukadev's own example. He was an Atmanandi. He was realizing the, the bliss of the self, which is significant in one sense because it's the real object of love in this world is the self. The Upanishads say, we don't love, man does not love the wife, wife does not love the man, parents do not love the children, children do not love the, the parents. Hmm? Everyone loves themselves. In other words, what makes another person or another thing important to me is the extent to which I've projected myself into them by thinking that they are mine. Mine. If it's mine, it's important to me. If it's my car that gets a flat tire, it's important. If it's yours, I just keep driving. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> So, because I've projected myself into it, consciousness has the power to project itself into material things and identify with them. Hmm? My parents, my children, my husband, my husband, whatever it may be, but it's really the me hmm, that I'm concerned about, or consciousness. So consciousness, the Atma, is the real object of love in the world. It's what everybody's really loving. And it's really lovable because it's part and parcel of the Supreme Godhead. Hmm? Right? Mm -hmm. If we trace it to its origins. Mm -hmm. So we have some capacity to love, but that will be fully realized in relation to the perfect object of love. So Atmananda is one thing, and Bhakti Ananda, the joy of Bhakti, that is another thing. The Atmananda is not sufficient, nor the Atmagyan, to dispel the influence of Maya. If it was, we wouldn't be in Maya. Mm -hmm. Right? So we need help from outside of ourself. That is the ingress of bhakti, the sarup shakti, that has the power, as this Dhammadarastakam is going to tell us, to conquer Krishna. What to speak of? Dispel the influence of maya, then. Hmm? So, we should, so we should petition like the Muni, Nalamishpuram, and say something about, oh, he is such an ananda rupam, he is the full form of eternity, knowledge, and this concentrated Satchitananda. Brahman is like, like 
what do you say, diffused or, you know, diluted, diluted Satchitananda. Hmm? Here, Satchitananda is, it has a shape and it's moving. Brahman is everywhere. If you're everywhere, you can't move. There's nowhere to go. You're already there. Hmm? If you're omniscient, you already know everything. There's nothing more to know. And therefore, there's nothing to do. Hmm? But in Krishna, Satchitananda, Rupam, the form of such, we find he's moving and he's lacking in knowing. He doesn't know, for example, hmm? what it is in him that drives Radha mad and so on, as we've, as we've discussed. There's more knowing in that unknowing than there is in omniscience of of the Godhead with Aishwarya. Hmm? It's a very, very beautiful and charming idea. Hmm? Uh. So he's described, Satchitananda Ghana, Ghana, like concentrated Satchitananda. It's now taken a shape. And, 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 and in effect, what's causing that Brahman to take a shape? That is bhakti. Hmm? Because as much as there is bhakti, or sarup shakti, Interacting with Bhagawan is as much as he moves. Shakti is not manifest in Brahman, he's not moving. When he's standing next to Lakshmi and reverential devotees in Baikuntha, he's got a little movement, a little something's going on. Hmm? We heard about the Leelas of Narayan in his form of Nishringa or Kurma or Vamana, there's a little movement there. Hmm? Right? When we go to Goloka, in Krishna Leela, huh? in Dwarka, there's a lot of movement there, huh? but not like in Vrindavan. In Dwarka, he, he sleeps and dreams about Vrindavan, about, about Radha, about Yashoda, Subal, calls out their names, and the queens wake up. Oh. Rukmini said, Oh, we, we know he's really in Vrindavan because at night when he sleeps, Sometimes he calls out their names. Satyabhama says, what do you know? You're nothing. He calls them out in the daytime. Hmm. He's not. He's only a shell of himself here. We know that. We don't talk about Vrindavan here because if we do, then he'll be gone. Hmm. In Vrindavan, he's always moving. He's never sleeping, hmm. practically. Hmm. Right? Yep. All, mother puts him to sleep. He goes out the window. All night he's up. Comes back in time just to just to be look like he's in bed, uh, catch a wink before it's time to wake up again. Hmm? So if we keep you busy around here, you know, let's get used to it. <laughs> uh, if you're going to be a, a gopi or a, a friend of Krishna, there's, there's, especially one involved in his romantic life. You're going to have to be a pretty busy guy or gal, hmm? right? So the point being that the bhakti is more intensely manifest there. And what's happening is Brahman is moving that much more. So Brahman is the, Bhakti is the animating principle in the life of the Absolute. Hmm? Hmm. It can, can make he who's everywhere move. Not only move, but, but dance. Hmm? He who has everything feel want and necessity. Hmm? He who controls everything come under the control of his devotees. So, something the Muni has said about him, and then he goes on, we'll continue our discussion in the next class. Any question? Time? Okay, good. So it's nice to sit with all of you and discuss these points. I do appreciate your inquiring nature that's 50 percent of the of the uh, what's going on here so it's tribute to all of you my respects to everyone vancha kopa to the best chakra person to the eva chat but it on them probably be rushed to be the mother maha ananda goody western of your job